Welcome to our lecture online. I must say that this particular problem from the JE Advanced Test in 2021 was a very confusing problem and easily misunderstood. Not only that, it was a huge long problem. I didn't put all of the text down on the board because it would have covered most of the board. But it's essentially as follows. We have a loop here of radius A, which is made out of some metal that has no resistance. They bring from infinity along the axis going through this loop a dipole M1, and they give us the magnitude of the dipole's magnetic field, which is equal to this. They also tell us that the force between the two, now this of course will uh, set up an induced current, which will essentially also be a, di a dipole because it, um, it produces a force between the two, and the force between the two is uh, given as um, K M1 M2 over R to the fourth power. And now for part two, they want us to figure out what the work done is in bringing the dipole from infinity to its position R away from the current loop. Hmm. They give us four possible answers, and we sit there and go, well, how do we do this? Well, first of all, the work done is going to be equal to the integral of the force times dr as we're bringing it in closer and um, notice that it's along the line so we don't have a, a cosine of an angle theta there and if we plug in what the force is equal to we get the work done is equal to the integral of the force which is k times m1 m2 divided by r to the fourth times dr and you might be tempted to go ahead and assume that m1 and m2 are constants k is a constant you move those out and you go ahead and integrate dr over r to the fourth but if you did that you would get the wrong answer so what we want to do is we want to replace m1 by the magnetic uh, field magnitude and so we can then write that the work done is equal to the integral of k times m1 which is mu sub naught m divided by 2 pi r cubed times m2 over r to the fourth and that would be times dr but again we're looking for the force between the two as being the product of their of their magnetic moments and if we assume that m2 is some constant times m some constant times m then this would become work is equal to uh, k times mu sub naught times some constant divided by 2 pi times m squared over r to the seventh times dr. And if we take all this as a constant, of course, I want to go ahead and put the integral there so that I move everything, all, all the constants out of the integral sign. And then we want to integrate that from infinity to r. They didn't tell us really what the value of m2 is and that bothers me so i'm kind of dealing with it like that but again um, it's kind of a confusing problem not sure what they want us to do there but if we go ahead and integrate that we have work is equal to i'm going to take all this and call it constant 2 times m2 or m squared times the integral of r to the minus 7 dr and then, of course, that I can integrate from infinity to r. So this becomes C2m squared times r to the minus 6 over 6, or minus 6, I should say, evaluated from infinity to r. And then, of course, I bring this across. I get this is, my, this is uh, minus C squared, or C2m squared over 6 times 1 over r to the 6th from infinity to r and then when i plug in the infinity i get zero so i can not worry about that when i plug in the upper limit i get minus c squared over six times m squared over r to the sixth like this so this is the constant portion that's m squared over r six and when i look at the possible answers i do see it as answer c like that but again, I'm not feeling very comfortable with the m squared in the numerator because I really didn't know what to do with m sub 2. But at least I got the correct value for the exponent of r. And only because what I've done was I took the equation for the force and I replaced m1 
by what m was equal to in terms of its magnetic field. And that is how it's done.